let's discuss more consequences in living in a forced birth state. This mom goes to fill a prescription to induce miscarriage, but the pharmacist won't fill her prescription. This mom wanted her child, but she was having a miscarriage and she had had a string of miscarriages and her latest pregnancy wasn't going along well. So according to the ultrasound, she went in, had it, and the fetus was not developing well. At nine weeks pregnant, she um, was preparing for a miscarriage, unfortunately. She was heartbroken and given a prescription to induce bleeding and discharge in the comfort of her own home. But instead of the pharmacist doing his, his or her job, he said no. He stood there and humiliated her, and she was at the mercy of that person who unilaterally decided not to fill her prescription. Walgreens eventually apologized. The woman's situation was handled, but this is what happens when you allow people that are not the person that is miscarrying or making the decisions to come in and make decisions for you. This is what happens in a red state where these people think that they can control women's lives. Now, let's talk from the perspective of the doctors. This one, um, this headline, San Antonio obstetrician, abortion ban complicates high-risk pregnancy care. For doctors who work with high-risk pregnancies, Texas abortion ban has added, has added an extra layer of pressure and paperwork when making life or death decisions because doctors can be fined or face prison for doing an, an illegal abortion. This law applies even in cases of rape and incest. The only exception is medical emergencies when the mother's life is at risk. And you know what? The doctors have to wait until the woman is actually having a real crisis to make this decision. This doctor says a mom recently came into one of the hospitals bleeding profusely at 15 weeks and a doctor called to see if they should perform a DNC. Why do they have to do this? If a woman is bleeding profusely, handle it. But no, there's too many um, hoops to jump through because of these abortion bans. And then you have Louisiana. Let's talk about this story. This woman, this woman, Caitlin Joshua, found out she was pregnant. She actually wanted to um, have a baby and she was about six weeks pregnant and she called to make her first prenatal appointment and she was denied. They specifically said, we no longer see women until they're at least 12 weeks pregnant. So Louisiana is trying to circumvent their own laws by delaying when they see pregnant women. And she's wondering how in the world can we have a viable healthcare system for women when you won't see women until 12 weeks? This is a big discussion. Y'all like, comment, share. Let's get into it.